Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis, and in this video we are going to cover the Master and therefore also show you a couple tips that basically also include the Legend version of the Metamorphosis Lost Sector. Now today is March 24th, but if you see this anytime in Season of the Risen, pretty much everything else will follow because currently we are in the Season of Void 3.0. When we get Solar 3.0 and Arc 3.0, obviously those are going to change some options, but right now Void is really kind of the best option. Even when you're in situations like this, we've got Overload and Unstoppable Champions, which Overload, I'm not a fan, but you can actually embrace the Void a little bit that way. Unstoppable, got a Pulse Rifle there. The Burn is going to be Arc. Your Heavy should always match the Burn on basically any of these to make sure you get the most damage output that you can. And then Shields, Arc, and Solar are going to be your issues. Now, Arc, got that covered in the Heavy. Solar, we're, we're going to take the Pulse Rifle in. Now, this is actually a very good pulse rifle, and this is a cool combination that you potentially should look out for. If you get an Ogma with adaptive munitions, keep it. Right now, it's one of the few solar pulse rifles, and it's one of the few that have adaptive munitions. So, pulse rifle, champions, adaptive munitions, shields, works on a lot of different fronts. The other thing this one actually has is turnabout. Using this weapon to break a shield of a combatant or a guardian with their super will grant you an overshield. So, if I break a shield... And with this one, it doesn't matter so much what type. If I break a shield, I'm going to get an overshield, which just is good for survivability. I've got a tarantula. I just literally leveled this thing up. It's got field prep and dragonfly, so it's not even like that good. It's just one that I've got on it. As I'm going to be using this to basically wound my champions or kill them, um, I'm going to probably... It's kind of a toss-up. Do I want faster charge time or more in the magazine? Honestly, just to try and get the most while they're stunned. Field prep is nice for reserves, but that's mostly it. Dragonfly, I don't even think I took advantage of that last time. Now, if you want to use something like Hothead, the biggest thing is the main reason I'm going for a linear fusion, and this is the way I'm set up for the build, is because I'm going for overload void grenades. And I want to use void because it gives me a little more survivability. I've got my overshield with my void sentinel. If you're going to run devour, if you're going to run Divis invisibility, you've got some options. I've got uh, Void Grenades are going to weaken, which is also going to help me damage those champions a little quicker because the overload are the more of an issue. Defeating targets with your grenades grants volatile rounds, so if you do th chunk your grenade. As I'm mostly using my grenades to stun, this actually probably could get switched to something else. And Void Ability Final clo Blows ta cause targets to explode. So I can probably mix those up. Bastion and Control Demolition are what I'm running on my Titan. You got Warlock, Go Devour. Hunter, you could go invisible on some of this stuff. Um, but the big thing is you're going to want DPS resistance on all of these at Master. Void is big for the snipers. They nearly killed me um, with the resistance on. They were pretty much nearly one-shotting me without the resistance. Uh, and then, of course, having the option for other resistance is good, too. Just because you can get both. Sorry, apparently I'm being picked off by random guys that spawn. It's the only problem with the Lost Sectors being out here in the wild. So again, if you go Master, it is 1580. So I'm using a bit more of an optimized loadout here, hence Arbalist and the Linear Fusion Rifle. I can take advantage of Scavenger and Ammo Finder perks on both. The Psychogenic Intel, or the Sonic Forging, probably not going to help too much. Um, as for Wells and things of that nature, probably not going to get a ton out of these. Rapid Kinetic Finder Blows, uh, anything that matches my subclass, not really getting a whole bunch. Uh, that's probably the only thing I can really take advantage of is just that. So, for now, that's what we're running with. This is a weird loadout, but you need to be able to manage Arc Shields, which we've got covered. You need to manage Solar Shields, which we have covered. And the Arc Shields, honestly, if you have Adaptive Munitions, you can whittle away because it's just a couple of the Knights, even on Master Difficulty, that are kind of protecting the Crystals. It's not so much a Champion-related thing. So, if you got Adaptive Munitions on, say, this, that's going to work pretty well. If you've got Adaptive Munitions on, say, Under Your Skin and Archer's Tempo, that will also be an option. The main reason if you go bow on this one and you still are running Void Subclass, at that point you are going to have to run something for Unstoppable. And that really limits your options because we don't have a ton in the first place. So, we're going to go with what I've got here. And I know this is somewhat of a specialized loadout. You have a lot more flexibility on Legend for both what hits you and just kind of taking some more basic weapons in there. But on Master, things hurt a lot, so I'm optimized. So let's go. Just a quick reminder, some of you guys may have not seen this from now through the end of March 29th. You can get 30% off your order of advanced GGs. If you're looking to try a new flavor to restock on anything that you've actually run out of, now is a great time for that 30% off. So get a couple flavors, make that shipping efficient, and again, thank you all for the support. If you got any questions about advanced GG, hit me up in the comments or find me on Twitter. Back to the video. 
All right, so when you start, you're going to want to stay back. We got three champions up. So you're going to have an unstoppable. You're going to have two overload to deal with. Your goal is to take out these lurkers and try and focus on this front overload champion. So if you can get up to this wall, use it for cover if possible. But be aware that things are going to be a bit of an issue. Now, if you can stun that overload champion, priority number one, kill it. Because if you're using just your grenades to stun, then at that point you are going to um, basically get one shot. Now, the raiders also hurt. So be careful about those. Those ravagers are nice and explosive. But again, I can get sniped all the way from the back of the room by one of those raiders. And if your health is even slightly down, you are going to get kind of nuked. So again, playing cautious here is important. Looking for those enemies. Looking for the raider in the back. Now, if they're distracted by the other enemies, that's great. But if you can kill the raiders, it's worth that extra shot. And again, these two right here kind of have this weird invisible barrier for them to be able to go between. There you go. Watch the fire buffs. Getting frozen obviously would be bad for position, so stay in cover as much as you can. And the guy that I want to take out is this one. The one in the back who's getting really annoying with the little launching of solar energy. If you can, break that shield. It's a nice time to put a chunk of damage in. There we go. He is down. But again, see how I've actually got that turnabout shield? Overload shield lasts for 10 seconds. Actually works fairly well. So I'm going to work on busting up some of these raiders first. Because I've got most of the right side cleared out. The raiders are the ones that will get you quicker than you would think. Once you got a few of the adds taken out, then you can go in with the grenade. Make sure your heavy is reloaded before you try and do this, because this is not smart to try and risk it. But at that point, commit everything. Even if you die here, it's not a big deal. It is well worth going for that kill when you have that enemy stunned. So make sure, when you, if you're going up the way I am, where the only overload stun you have is those void grenades... Make sure that's happening. Now, those restorative light little bumps, those are going to be basically due to attrition. And that's why this place hurts so much. Regeneration is greatly impaired. Defeating enemies can create wells of light for healing. So that's those little white ones on the ground. Now, what you can do here is break all the crystals. Find your raiders, because they're going to be a little busy. If you don't touch the champion, the champion and the knight tend to focus on each other a lot. Yeah, in case you were run wondering, those little baby butterflies, they hurt like crazy. But if you die, it's not the end of the world. This isn't going to be my flawless run. I'll probably work on that later, but it's not a big deal. But again, once you're over here, you've got the crystals down. Try and find the lurkers. Try and find the raiders. 1580 is just going to be a little slow. No other way to do it. And again, let the champion and those two just duke it out. Focus on the raider. Now, if he is almost down, you can break this shield. And then all you got left is big boy. Now I need him to actually turn around. But the nice thing about letting those two go at it for a little while, he is actually going to be a little bit lower on health, which is good. I'm going to save my heavy here for a minute. And finish. All right. So this is Snorri. If you do see any of those, hold on to those, because those can definitely have some fun rolls on them. Now, the next section is down here, but honestly, don't jump down. Kill what you can from above, but don't go for the champion, especially if you're going grenade style like I am, because we got a champion, an unstoppable, and another unstoppable. So you got three champions. But the main goal, you got to scream down here first, so be careful for that. You're going to have some adds tucked over here. If you got anything that you can throw at them, nice little scream explosion will work well if I can get him next to him. But again, he's not going to do too much until I get down there. So, trying to make sure any other adds are down. That's just keeping him annoyed. Make sure I'm reloaded on my heavy. So then if you go for that stun, you got to be ready for it. Find the head. Find the little prickly parts on top. Make sure it dies. And if you got any screams coming at you, pull back as far as you can and hope for the best. If you die, attrition just sucks. There's not much you can do about it. I'm going to pop my overshield. If you got anything like Devour, if you got Invisibility, it's a good time to go for that. Screebs as well. Nice ways to get those little bonus clears. Unstoppable champions, though. One is sitting there. Eventually, he's going to peek out to where you can see him. 
trying to kill the other guys first. And granted, if I can get that guy stunned, I'll use it. But mostly, I just want to make sure my heavy is up. I've still got plenty of it. Wasted an extra shot there because one was not a crit, but that's okay. Now from here, you're looking for your crystals. Same thing as before. Try and find them. Try and peek over the walls. Because those two are kind of busy with each other. And the crystals are not always in, in the same spot either. So if you get to looking around, you don't see them. The one's back there. Your goal is to get the crystals so then those two can go after each other. Now, if you want to have some fun, you can nuke this guy first. He might get his shield back, but that's a barrier weapon, which works a little bit. Pissed off the champion, so I got to give it a second. Reload my heavy so I can nuke him down. If I got more ammo with the Arbalist, I will put that work probably in with Arbalist here. If you die here, it's not a big deal. If you're going for flawless, obviously be a little more cautious than I am. And I've got plenty of ammo over here, so it works. Stuff still hurts. It's 1580, so... But again, if you start killing some of these champions, a few deaths aren't going to end your run just because you should have a decent amount of reses. If you're going for a flawless run in here, obviously being higher level will make that more doable. The other issue, though, of course, now as I do have adaptive munitions, I could probably work this guy's shield down a little quicker. So he puts that shield up. Hold on to your grenade. You're probably going to want it for the next room. If it's vortex, it's a good one to kind of group those ads up. Eventually, that shield should go down until he runs into cover. And this is just why Arbalus is still one of my favorites. It's a barrier weapon, it goes through shields. Also, it just hits like a chunk. And if you pair it with another linear fusion rifle, your ammo is going to be, you know, your reserves and your ammo finders are going to work together. Now, I'll tell you, if you have enough deaths and you can get a chunk of damage in on the boss, and even if you die, you can spawn up here, theoretically, and then do damage to the boss. When you're going to do damage to the boss, you want to make sure everything else is dead to you so you can focus that damage. Because you only get a certain window and then you have to kill the three crystals again and deal with a few more adds. So my advice is deal with the adds first and then go for your damage. Nothing is really going to spawn. So if you got a well, put it back here. If you're going to do anything for grenades, spawn that stuff together up there. I'm going to look for my champion. Try and use these pillars as cover. They're actually a really good way to get that cover. Come on, just die. There we go. Now, make sure your heavy is reloaded so you can go for that DPS. Make sure your alternate's reloaded. And then when you break all three crystals, that's when you get you're going to get your damage chunk. This would be a good time for something along the lines of a bigger, like a DPS super. That's what this would be really good for. If I can see him, he's going to get his shield up because I can't see his butt. Yep. And that's just unfortunate, mostly because of that timing. But again, once the champion's down, you only got to deal with it once. Same thing, make sure your heavy's reloaded. If I would have had, like, extended mag, the dude would have been dead. Gotta find our last crystal. Apparently, I got it. If you do break the crystals, be ready for the kill. And he's done. So, it's really not that bad. It's just a little bit of... The front is honestly the worst. And if you die too much there, just reload it and practice again. But the front is the worst of that one. So, once we're through that, grab your loot. And, hey, I actually got an exotic on that one. So, that is Metamorphosis in the Throne World on Master Difficulty. The main differences when it comes to Legend is, for one, it's 1550, so it's much easier for incoming and outcoming damage. And then you just have a few less champions, but the loadout theoretically would work the same. You would just have probably a couple other options uh, when it comes to your DPS weapon up here. You could probably even run something like an Overload Auto Rifle just to give you more flexibility on Legend. I did that previously.
So if you did find this video beneficial, please drop a like below. Leave a comment if you've got suggestions of loadouts, because on this one, I'm actually very curious what a lot of people are running. If you want to find me on Twitter, it's Ebontis. If you want to find me streaming, whether it's Tuesday or Wednesday for Destiny or a lot of Elden Ring right now, you guys can find me over there. And right now for Advanced GG, you got 30% off, so use my code over there, Ebontis30. Thank you, guys. Thank you for the subscribes, and thank you for the Patreons and channel members. All of you are awesome. I'll see you soon.